different ways to attach a collar to a garment. One is with a full facing, both a front and a back neckline will encase the collar in the garment. A half of a facing where you only have the front of the collar attached to the garment with a facing cut in the front and the back of the neckline is attached either by hand or by sewing machine. collar may also be attached to a garment with a bias strip. This type of finish is usually used with sheer fabrics. The finish may be by hand stitching or by sewing machine. And finally we have the shirt collar or standing collar which is attached to the garment with the garment inserted between the layers of the collar. We'll now show you how to attach collars. We will attach the collar with a full facing. The facing is prepared by stitching the shoulder seams and finishing the raw edge. An interfacing is placed down the front of the garment and in the back neckline. The collar has been stitched and turned. With the garment right side up, we will place the collar in the suitable position. As we are using a mandarin collar, we will have the right side of the collar facing the right side of the garment. Place a few pins at matching points. The shoulder seam, as this collar finishes at the center front, we bring the collar to the center front. Continue on the other side of the garment. The collar may be basted in place before the facing is attached. We now will take the facing and the right side down will once more pin the collar and the neckline and the facing together. We now are dealing with several layers of garment. Bring all your edges so they are flush. On this garment, we are allowing one half inch seam allowance. Pin directly on the stitching line to avoid puckers. When you have finished attaching the entire neckline area, you proceed down the front of the garment. Not all garments with collars need have a long front facing. Just a complete facing, a facing that covers 
the whole neckline. A few additional steps are necessary to ensure a reduced amount of bulk when we will be stitching and trimming the garment. That is, at the neckline intersections of the facing, we'll clip off some of the fabric. The same thing will take place on the garment side. Just a slight clip will reduce the amount of excess seam allowance in that area. The next step is basting, a secure basting, because you don't want to have to have to rip because your collar has not stayed in place. The garment has now been basted, the front, the facing, the collar, the garment, and our basting is very close to the stay stitching. The next step is we stitch. This time the stitching is allowing one half inch seam allowance. We've already removed the basting and trimmed the long seam allowances. We're now going to trim and clip our neckline. Clip at the corner and trim along the neckline edge. After you have finished trimming away the excess fabric, you must clip so that the facing will lay smooth. Clipping every half an inch or even three-eighths of an inch is absolutely essential. Your option differs with the circumference of the neckline. If you have a large circumference, half an inch is sufficient. If you have a very narrow neckline, you'll find it, it's necessary to clip at three eight inch intervals. In some cases, you may want to finish the neckline facing with a back stitch around the facing, attaching the facing to the seam allowance area. It is not an absolute necessity. It is just an option. We then will turn it and roll your edges in the desired direction. In that, I mean if this garment is going to be worn as a lapel, you would want to roll the seam allowance under 
so you would not see the contrasting color or the seam line. If the garment is to be worn closed, then you would roll the seam allowance to the wrong side. Once more, you do not want to see the raw edge. A finished mandarin collar neckline with a full facing. You would want your facing to lay absolutely flat without any puckers and the garment will then fit well. A full facing. The collar need not be a mandarin collar. The placement of a convertible collar or a Peter Pan collar will work just as well in this kind of attaching a collar. We're going to attach a collar with just a front facing. The collar we're using is the convertible. This type of finish to a neckline is more suitable with a straighter neckline to your collar. Therefore, a, a convertible or mandarin or even a band collar will work with this kind of preparation. Once more, a front interfacing. A back neckline interfacing is not necessary. The first thing we're going to do is attach the collar, the under collar to the back neckline from seam to seam. Stitch it and as I've basted it I will now remove my basting. A slight amount of trim is acceptable. Now you will notice that this collar has a very deep slash. And the slash takes place in both the upper and under collar at the seam line. All right, from that slash point on, we will now attach the collar to the front neckline. Pin it in place. Again, this particular collar ends at the center front of the garment. The next step is to take the back neckline seam allowance and crease it up into the collar. Take the top collar and turn it under on what would be the stitching line and pin it in place just covering the stitching line. Take 
tuck away all the excess up to the slash. This may be basted at this time, but it is not necessary. When we baste the, the facing into place, that's when that can also be basted. We'll now apply our facing with right sides together, place the facing to the front of the garment, and bring it around the neckline. You will notice that there is a deep slash in the facing, not exactly too far from the edge of the facing, approximately half an inch. We match up the slash points. We are now going to take this little bit of excess and slip it into the back collar. With the other side already pinned, we're now ready to baste. We'll baste the entire front, turn a corner when we come to the top, and then baste across the back of the neckline. We basted the garment. The whole front, the neckline, and now this little spot right here where our collar and facing are in position. The garment is basted across, the facing has been basted. We're now going to stitch the garment and we stop our stitching at this point. We stitch the front and we stop here. We'll then turn the facing and stitch the back neckline or back collar. It's not absolutely necessary to stitch the facing first. You may, if you wish, first stitch the collar and then return to the facing points. I'll do that now. I'll start with the collar. Start just a little bit past the intersection of the facing and the collar and stitch very close to the edge. The garment is stitched and as you can see, the stitching has come across both facings and has stopped at the edge or at the slash point. The collar has been stitched down in this manner. We're now going to be ready to trim and clip and slash. And we trim away a sharp corner. We always trim away our corners with a sharp 
neckline and trim your layers around the neckline. Always keeping in mind, if you have a heavy fabric, you will have to trim in layers. We next clip our neckline at one, at three-eighths to one-half inch intervals. When you finish clipping, you turn your garment to the right side. Taking care that your seam allowances are clear, that the edges are rolled in the direction you wish to wear the garment. If you plan to wear this as an open garment, then you must roll your seams to the right side. If you plan to wear this with a garment neckline closed, you roll your seams to the inside. We have here a completed garment. with the front facing in place and the collar complete. Again, I used a convertible collar, but we can use a mandarin or any type of straight neckline finish. We're going to apply a collar to a neckline without a facing. We're going to use a strip of bias as our finishing for the neckline. In this garment, we, you do not need a separate facing. We are going to use a fold back or self facing. In order to prepare your interfacing for this type of garment, we're going to stitch our strip of interfacing to the right side of the garment, turn the interfacing along the edge to the inside of the garment, and then fold the garment along the edge. So we do have two self-facings, one for the left front and one for the right front. We're now ready to apply our collar. We place the collar with the under collar to the outside of the garment and the upper collar up. Pin the collar to the center back, to your shoulder seams, and to the center front. Do not catch your facing. At this point, we're going to fold our facing over the center and partially over the collar. We'll pin that down.
And we'll now take our tape and line it up with the raw edge of the garment about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch beyond the edge of the folded back facing. And we'll pin our edges together. As we use a bias strip, you may find that you must stretch the outer edge of the bias to let it contour to the neckline shape and slightly ease the neckline area. When you have finished pinning the bias tape to the neckline, we baste it. Again, we will use one half inch seam allowance. With the neckline basted, we're ready to start stitching. We will stitch with the collar and the bias trim down, the garment up. We're using one half inch seam allowance. Care should be taken that you do not form little puckers or creases in this neckline. We will remove the basting and trim the neckline. With our neckline trimmed and clipped, we're ready to finish. Bring the collar up and out of the way. In order to shape the bias trim, you will have to stretch ever so slightly on the outer edge. Then turn under the edge of the trim about one quarter of an inch and lay it flat against the neckline. Pin that in place to your garment. When you've finished base pinning, you're ready to baste again. Sometimes you probably will feel that basting is very tiresome, but until you become skilled enough to sew without it, it is a very important aid.
in order to finish the neckline of this garment, you have two options. You may finish it by hand or by machine. The sewing by machine does not interfere at all in the look of the garment since the stitching will be under the collar. Generally, this type of finish to a facing is used when you have enough collar to cover the neckline or in sheer garments. We stitch very close to the edge of the tape. Tack and stitch. Remove the garment from the machine. Clip your threads. And although the machine stitches are visible, when the garment is finished, and closed, you cannot see the stitching. A neckline finish without a facing. The shirt collar is attached in a slightly different manner than all other collars. The garment is sandwiched between the two collars, the inner collar and the outer collar, or actually the neck band of the collar. Before we approach the collar, let's find out a little bit about finishing the front of the shirt. The left hand side is finished very simply. The raw edge is turned under and then turned once more and top stitched. The right hand side, well, we'll give it what we call a shirt finish to it. We turn back the edge the desired amount. We'll turn once more on that raw edge. With the garment turned in this position, we'll put a few pins in to secure it. And then we'll move to the sewing machine to stitch. We are allowing one quarter of an inch seam allowance. fronts are long, so it takes no, a little longer to stitch this seam. Mm -hmm. 
We're now ready to attach the collar. We turn the shirt front out and we will press it. Care should be taken not to reverse your collar. This is the under collar and the outer neck band. The upper collar and the inner neck band. So we will start with right sides together of the outer neck band to the neckline edge. Matching notches will bring the edge of the collar and the edge of the garment together. You will notice that when you bring the edge of the garment and the to the edge of the neckband, you're going to it's going to look as if there is a space. But there really isn't, because this is your seam line right here, and that's the intersecting point. We'll stick a pin in so you will be able to see more clearly. And we pin the rest of the neckline. When the neckline has been pinned completely, we will baste. Basting. After basting, we're ready to stitch. We'll stitch using the required amount of seam allowance. After stitching, same story, remove the basting and trim. This little collar can be very tricky and can be rather unsightly if not finished well. One must have a very crisp, tailored look to a shirt collar. We're now ready to finish the collar. We still have one more inside stitching. First you tuck under your collar. Then you wrap the inner collar 
around the outer. All right, shall we do it again? Here is your stitching line, your raw edge. We take this neck band, tuck under the collar and the shirt, and bring your raw edges together. You need only stitch all these layers together for about an inch. Let's put a pin in here and stitch. Remove your needle and your thread and clip. We now can trim off the excess fabric. And now, let's slip it to the right side to see what happens. You now are clean finished. Around this corner. Both corners must be done exactly alike. We're now ready to finish the rest of this collar. Crease the inner collar down over the outer collar. Everything must be flat and smooth. Turn under the raw edge of the inner collar and just have it clearing the stitching and pin. After you finish pinning, we baste. The inner collar must fit exactly. It should not be too large because then you'll find yourself taking tucks where tucks are unnecessary. This must be a fitted neckline finish. Nice and tight. and we baste. With a collar and neckband basted to the garment, we are going to stitch. This time we're going to stitch with the right side of the garment up. And we'll crack stitch the collar in place, following the seam line of the collar. The collar may be top stitched on. Reverse the procedure to attach 
the collar. In this type of collar, you also may want to do some top stitching. We now can top stitch around the edge of the neckband. And that would finish the collar, giving it a more of a sportswear look. When the collar is finished, you have almost finished your shirt with a shirt band and a collar attached.